Are you looking for an easy way to handle certificates for your self-hosted web applications using a wildcard cert via an easy to use web UI? In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to do just that using Nginx Proxy Manager. We'll talk about the setup process in Docker, the importance of getting DNS right, and show you some example configurations. So let's get started. Are you an individual or forward-thinking business seeking expert assistance with network engineering, storage, or virtualization projects? Maybe you're part of an internal IT team that needs to proactively manage, monitor, and secure your technology. We offer comprehensive consulting services tailored to meet your specific requirements. Whether you need fully managed or co-managed IT services, our team is ready to help you. We specialize in supporting businesses that require IT administration or teams seeking an extra layer of support to enhance their operations. Our install team is ready to assist you with all of your structure cabling and Wi-Fi planning needs as well. To learn more about any of our services, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out the Hire Us form, and let us start crafting the perfect IT solution for you. If you want to show some extra love for our channel, check out our swag store with shirts, hats, dust accessories, and more. We also have affiliate links down below that will get you discounts and deals on products and services we talk about on this channel. With the ad read out of the way, let's get you back to the content that you came here for. Now we're starting with DNS and how a reverse proxy works because almost always when someone has a reverse proxy that's not working, it's DNS. In the normal scenario that many people are used to, whether it's public or private, these are going to be private servers, so that's why these are all private IP addresses, but it does work similar in the public space as well. We have a client that makes a request to somewhere like graylog.lawrencesystems.com and we want to get to my Graylog server. Well, that DNS is going to be 172.16.16.3, as in that DNS entry for graylog.lawrencesystems.com is going to match the server. And the same for my Bitwarden server. I have it at thewarden.lawrencesystems.com, and that is 172.16.16.26, and that's also where the DNS will match as well. But when you put a reverse proxy in front of these, because you don't want these servers handling a certificate, you want the reverse proxy handling a certificate. The reverse proxy looks at the incoming client SNI, server name indicator. How does the client know what the SNI should be when you go to thewarden.lawrencesystems.com or graylog.lawrencesystems.com? Well, that's DNS. It does a DNS lookup, and the DNS is supposed to be, in a reverse proxy situation, the reverse proxy. This is something that people struggle with because they want the system itself to be able to be also with the same name, and that's just not going to work. So what you're using for its reverse proxy or its SNI name can't be the same as the server. So you can't have a 172.16.16.31 equaling graylog.lawrencesystems.com and also equaling 172.16.16.3. So your DNS for all of the services we're going to be setting up here needs to be set to the reverse proxy. Now you can have completely different names because reverse proxy, we're doing this by IP address. You can give it whatever name you want over here. You can call it bitwarden.lawrencesystems.com, but it's called the warden in terms of what we're setting in reverse proxy. But having the DNS correct is very important. And yes, browsers, after you change DNS, and if people are moving from having the server handle certificate to a reverse proxy, you will find that the browser may cache that particular entry. So sometimes you do have to start and stop your browser. I've even had people reboot their computers because it's hanging on to a DNS entry. And that is one of the first steps in troubleshooting is making sure you have your DNS set up properly because everything else hinges on that working. On the Nginx Proxy Manager site, they do have several different configuration options for setting up the app. They have one that can use SQL. They have one that can simply use SQLite. They have a Postgres option. So if you want to do more advanced configs, they do have these available. The exact Docker configuration I'm using, you'll find a link to down below in the description that will bring you over to my forums. And I have two options for you. The compose file I'm using uses Docker volumes, but if you would prefer Docker bind mounts, I've got that one here. Either way is a valid setup. There's merits to doing it each way. I'm not going to get lost in that, go ahead and spend some time Googling whether you want to use Docker volumes or Docker bind mounts. What's most important is wherever you store the configuration data, make sure you have it backed up. I'm using Debian because that is my preferred distribution of choice, but Docker works with many other distributions and should work much the same. I've created this directory called Nginx Proxy Manager, and we're going to now create a compose.yaml file for Docker. And we're just going to copy and paste this right over from my site. And as I said, we're using the Docker volumes. Now of note, if you chose the Docker bind method, please customize it to your settings because I did customize it. So it works with my username LTS. Save it to where you want your system saved if you're using bind mounts. Now we're going to run Docker compose up dash D. D means put it in daemon mode. And the first thing it has to do is 
download all of it. So the first time you set this up, it'll download based on however fast your system is, but it's not too big of a setup. Now let's take a look at the logs real quick, and the system seems to be up and running. Now taking a quick look at the compose.yaml file, I want to point out port 80 is the default listening port where it's going to redirect to 443, which is your HTTPS, and 81 is where Nginx Proxy Manager is accessible. So we're going to go to the IP address of this system, colon 81, and log in for the first time and get it set up. Now we're at the IP address of the server running Docker, colon 81, because it is the admin port. And then we're going to go admin at example.com, and the password is change me. And the first thing it wants you to do is change that password. So you can change the administrator name, put your own email address in here and hit save. I will actually just put admin two because I'm lazy. Password change me and then put in your new password and click save. Now you have a new credential set up. The next thing to do is start with SSL certificates. Adding an SSL certificate is really easy. I highly recommend using the DNS challenge. They have a lot of options here. They have everything from Azure to Cloudflare, standard cPanel, easy DNS, Google, and many, many more. The reason for doing this is you really want a wildcard certificate if you're looking for ease of use. Some people may not want a wildcard. I do prefer a wildcard certificate when setting this up. Now I moved over here to my production system and you can see I have my certificate set up. The asterisk is important when you're setting up for the wildcard cert. What a wildcard cert does is allow you to attach any domain, hence the asterisk, .lawrencesystems.com, and this will allow that cert to be valid. You can get specific and still use that same DNS key, so you can set up each individual one to have its own individual cert if you want. I just find it much more convenient to use the wildcard method. By the way, if you had more than one domain, you wanted to add a cert, for different domains, you can put them here. So it does support multiple domains and you're able to select that on a per proxy basis. Now clicking these three dots will let you renew, download, delete, or show the active domains that are connected to this particular certificate. Now, before we add the proxy host, I think we should have the DNS set up first, because as I said, this is where a lot of people will have problems is not having DNS working properly or not having it pointing at the right system. You can see all the entries I have here and the IP address that they're pointing at. So all of these point at 172.16.16.31. That is my Nginx Reverse Proxy Manager. So we're going to go ahead and create a new one here. And let's call this one graylog2.lawrencesystems.com. And once again, it's going to get the same IP address of our Nginx Proxy Manager. And we're going to hit Add. And now we have graylog and graylog2. So let's go ahead and now create an entry. So from the dashboard, we're going to click on proxy hosts. We're going to hit add proxy host, and we'll throw in the graylog 2lawrencesystemscom Click add. And by the way, you can add more than one domain here. So if we also had an entry for graylog 3, we'd be able to put both of these domains in here, provided they exist. We only created graylog 2, so we'll stop there. Scheme is where you choose HTTP or HTTPS for the service that you're accessing. And if that service has a self-signed certificate with HTTPS, it will automatically accept that self-signed certificate. It will not give an error. But Graylog is set up with HTTP, so we're going to go ahead and choose that. My Graylog server is at 172.16.16.3 and at port 9000. This is going to be on a per-service basis of whether or not you need any WebSocket supports. And publicly accessible is an option where you can customize custom ACL rules. I'll show you that in a moment. But now the next thing is choosing the SSL. If you forget to go to this tab and choose the SSL where you can say, we're going to request a new certificate or choose the Lawrence Systems or any other ones that you had available will be right here. So we'll go ahead and just hit that and we'll hit save. And now it should work. And here we are at graylog2.lawrencesystems.com and we pulled up my Graylog server. Now let's come back to Nginx Proxy Manager and talk about adding an access list. This is something that is optional, not needed. By default, it allows all, but you can create a series of access list rules. Anything that can get to Nginx Proxy Manager will automatically be redirected to any of the proxy hosts that you set up. But maybe you only want certain devices on the network, or maybe you're proxying something that doesn't have authorization and you want to put authorization in front of it. This is where you would do that. You would build either authorization or create allow by IP or subnet. So maybe you have this sitting central in your network and you want certain IP addresses to access it, or maybe only certain subnets. And you don't want to do that through your firewall rules or control it that way. You can control it this way because, of course, if things are on the same subnet, they'd be able to get to it. And you can create these allow and deny rules and build customized access control lists. 
Now, a few last features I want to mention. Redirect hosts, streams, and 404 hosts. Redirect hosts are redirects, as the name may imply, so you can direct one domain to another. And streams are for non-HTTP, HTTPS type of traffic. So you can use this in a way similar to the way port forwarding works, where you have an incoming port, a forwarding host, and a forwarding port. You can do this with TCP or UDP, but you can't necessarily apply an SSL certificate to all those things because it depends on the protocol of whether or not that is even supported of adding anything else in there. Go ahead and Google and read a little bit more. They have some information on their site if you have a use case for this. I'm only using it as a reverse proxy. So this is the part, as you can tell, that I'm using the most. It also has the ability to set custom 404 pages. And there's even an option in the settings to have a default site, which is the default answer it will give if there is no SNI given. As in, you just go to the IP address, whether it's HTTP or HTTPS, this is the page that will show up and it can be customized as well. Now, in the examples I gave in this video, they were separate hosts from Nginx Proxy Manager. But the question might be, could I run things on the same host, such as other Docker instances that are running at different ports? And absolutely, that works perfectly fine. That's a valid configuration. I just happen to have things on separate hosts, but you can set things up on the same host and just use the different port numbers. So as long as there's not any conflicting port numbers, because that's how Docker works, it has to bind to the IP and then the port, you can do that as well. That is a valid configuration. Hit me up in my forums to have a more in-depth discussion about this or other topics. And that's also where you'll find and also link down below the compose.yaml file that I use for this particular demonstration. So you can just copy and paste that. Like and subscribe to see more content from the channel and head over to lordsystems.com to connect with me on whatever socials you're finding me on there. All right, and thanks. Lawrence Systems thanks our sponsors for their support.